This video is in response to a number of students that had a little bit of difficulty navigating the website and what they're supposed to do. So I'm going to take you kind of step by step through the process. Uh, just as an aside, I have logged into my Canvas. It looks a little different than yours, um, but uh, yours should be similar in, in this respect. Uh, you should see the recent announcements here and you should also uh, see the home page uh, which has the butterfly off of it and you can read a little bit about it there and then uh, it has some links to places in the modules but uh, that's kind of a crutch for the beginning uh, we want to be able to navigate modules without having to go there and you can learn how to do that through uh, this video. So, uh, so you want to look at the announcements, right? So if you see any new announcements, so this one right here, this little blue dot tells me I haven't seen this one yet. And it looks like there's an announcement and it trails off here. You can kind of see it. So I could click on the announcement and then I can see what the announcement was and the information it contained. All right, so it says that uh, you need to click on modules and go through the lecture and lab modules and you can move the triangle. So basically for those of you that have not received your manual yet, because I know some of you ordered it from the bookstore and it hasn't been delivered yet, uh, then you can use this. So if you come here and scroll down and we'll go ahead and find that since we're here. So it's kind of, let me go back, sorry. Um, the way the modules are set up is click on modules, right? And then I'll show you the module. So the course orientation quiz, which is going to be deleted soon because it doesn't uh, was more to take attendance and participation than anything. Some important course information like the syllabus, how to study and take notes, course calendar by deadline, that class discussion. Uh, the first one is number one. That was about viruses. You still have a little bit of time to uh, complete that if you haven't. Uh, and we'll post them periodically and let you know. Uh, then we have here the OpenStax Concepts and Biology book. This is the free textbook if you want to get it. Uh, in the syllabus, it tells you a few other ways to get it and how to obtain a hard copy for like somewhere between $20 or $30, depending on what it was through Amazon. Uh, we have clustered all of the exams uh, in this spot here. Uh, so it's easy to find. Uh, it shows you the date, and they're going to start at 10.30 a.m. Uh, so make sure that you're ready and online and ready to go uh, on those days. Again, uh, if we uh, click on the first exam, right it tells me i have 60 minutes right here to do it okay and this tells me about the exam itself so i have 60 minutes there's five short answer questions and 40 multiple choice questions so it's available at 10 30 and we gave you an extra minute or two to log in and log out but it stops at 11 35. what that means is if you start at 10 40 it's going to automatically log you out at 1035. So um, we do have the ability uh, to automatically log you out, and that's what we do. So you have to make sure you start at 1030 in order to see that. Okay. So uh, that's going to be true for all of these. And again, even though you have 60 minutes, it's automatically log you out at 1035. Now, not every, uh, not every exam will be 60 minutes. Uh, you can always see how long it is by clicking on the exam itself. Um, and it'll tell you how many questions there are and what type of questions there are and, and things like that. I think that the minimum amount of time we have for any exam is 50 minutes. And I think the maximum amount of time we have for any exam is 75 minutes. It depends on what the nature of the questions are and, 
uh, what the content is and some of them re uh, require a little more uh, calculation like when we do genetics some of the genetic calculations uh, it'll take an extra few minutes so uh, we give you a little extra time to do that so that's where you'd find the exams and how you'd click and and, and get there uh, also to make it easier and to kind of make sure you understood we also put the links to the exams at the end of each module okay so this link test one right will go exactly to the same place as this link right? uh, but it's just another place to to find that so uh, then when we get to uh, the actual information for the course right uh, here are our lectures that are posted on YouTube. Uh, they are private, so that means you need the links. So you're going to have to link through modules to get there, right? And they're all for test one in the summer, okay? So you can look at all these, and there are various links in terms of uh, what we're talking about and what you need to know. And so this is all the information you have to know for the first test, okay? In addition, we also have some other information for test one that will help explain some of the more difficult subjects for students. As I said in the opening letter, Dr. Gelinas and I have been teaching biology together during the summer for almost 20 years. So we get a pretty good idea of what concepts students have problems with. And so, uh, you know, if you wanna know about the uh, scientific method, right, you can click here and it'll go through and there's some scientific method information All right we also have a lab on that which will reinforce those ideas uh, as an example uh, discussion one was talking about viruses and basically the question asks are viruses alive so one of the ways you can kind of investigate that is read the properties of life here and this is associated with the first exam and, and look at some of the the different things we see with life and uh, those aspects a lot of these things you're going to see in more detail later anyway so it'd be good to, to have these down and again since it's in the in section for the first exam you would expect this to have potential relevance to the first exam uh, so that's how we navigate it and then if you keep on going down here's the lectures for uh, lecture exam two Right, and then the little explanations uh, of that if you need more help for each one of those. And then lecture exam three with the explanation. So notice it's the same pattern. And then lecture exam four with the same explanations. Right. So that's how we look at, at those things. And then you get to almost the end of the module and we have the laboratories. Okay, so here's all the information that's on laboratory test one, and you can kind of scroll through that. And then the information on library test two. And for you guys, that will be the end of your lab portion. Okay, so all of that information from here, the end of lab two information, all the way to the beginning of lecture exam one information is the stuff you have to learn for the lecture exams so here are the lecture exams here uh, one of the things and you can kind of see i did a lot of scrolling there you can do but you have to remember is if you want to hide all this stuff here for temporarily right so what I'm most interested right now in at the beginning of the semester is the information for lecture exam one and the information for lab exam one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, and if you look, see the, the cursor goes from just an arrow to a little pointer finger, and I can click this uh, little triangle, and that hides all the information there. It didn't disappear. If I wanna see it again, I click the triangle again and point it down. So what, many students do so they don't have to worry about scrolling past all of this they just minimize these for the time being and now it's much easier to go from the test one information to the laboratory information you don't have to scroll as much but if you were going to forget about it and you know not remember you you have to 
make those large again when you get to that section, uh, then you might be better off scrolling all the time. All right. So uh, I'm not going to minimize laboratory test two because I'm not going to have anything after it. So there's no reason to scroll by that. So that's kind of how the, the modules are set up. And once you understand that, it should be a lot easier uh, to be able to manipulate things. So let's take a look at uh, what we have to do. So a number of students said the first day and said, okay, what exactly do I have to do? Well, let's go to the syllabus. So here's the syllabus right here. And we'll go through the, the syllabus. So you should read all this if you haven't. This is textbook information. Talks about the class and grading, right? How the tests are, what you do in laboratory, what you need to earn for an A, a B, a C, things like that. And then on page five is our recommended schedule. So let's take a look at our recommended schedule. And for a recommended schedule, you can see that on Monday 6:15, so on June 15th, the first day of class, you are recommended to finish these things. You're supposed to finish the lecture, intro, and overview, lab, the scientific method and experimental design, and then MB is mastering biology. So you're supposed to finish the intro to mastering biology and chapter and then the chapter one intro. Okay. And then you can see on Tuesday what you're supposed to do and Wednesday and Thursday. And you can see the entire semester laid out for you. One of the things that we tried to do when available is we tried to minimize the amount of work you had to do around the exams if possible. So notice for the uh, first lecture exam, right, the, the day before that you don't have any new lecture material, right, but you do have to do a lab so, because we would have lab that day if we were in school in a face-to-face -face class. And then for the first lab test, notice there's no lab the day before, but there's lecture because we would do that. And then the same thing is true for the lecture exam. Right, there's a lab before, but no lecture. Lecture exam three, lab, no lecture. Uh, lecture exam final, the, the final one. Uh, we don't have any new material the day before because the lab finals the Tuesday, and so the lab final, once you're done with lab, there's nothing to do. And then uh, again, we're trying not to have you learn any new lecture material the day before an exam. And so you kind of look at that setup and see that some days are going to be lighter than others because we're giving you some of that time uh, to study and prepare for the exam. So uh, every day uh, you should, and you should probably either copy this or, or you know, put it into your calendar and make sure, okay, this is what I'm going to accomplish today. And when I say put it in your calendar, you should plan and schedule study. So as an example, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic and we were meeting with this class face to face on campus like we had previous summers. Uh, we would probably, if we had this Monday through Thursday schedule, we would probably have one of the sections from 8.30 to 11 and then both sections would be in a lecture from 11.15 to 2.45. And then we'd have uh, another section from what three to 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 five thirty or something like that for lab. So you would have you know five hours or so of uh, school every day. And so our goal is for you to keep that schedule, but you won't have to do it at eight thirty in the morning uh, if you have a full time job or you want to sleep late and do it later. That's fine. But we really can't emphasize enough that you want to stick to this schedule if possible because this schedule we've made from our experience uh, is the one that we believe for the vast majority of you it's going to give you the most success in the course and especially for summer if you get too far behind it's going to be so difficult to make it up so I'm going to take a look at this so every day right Monday through Thursday you should go and say okay what am I supposed to do today and get it done? If you didn't, then go to Friday and say, okay, what do I need to, to catch up? Now, fully understanding that life is a little different for all of us uh, in general and especially nowadays, uh, we've also made a slightly different schedule. And that slightly different schedule are the due dates 
for the exams, the homework, the laboratories, and the mastering assignments. So even though you're supposed to finish the Intro to Mastering Bio and Chapter 1 Intro Mastering on the 15th, so I'll go back up here. So you're supposed to do that on the 15th, right? We recommended you finish it. It's really not due until 11.59 on Wednesday the 17th. So you have an extra couple days to do it. Uh, you should make sure you purchase your mastering. That's Remember, it's the Modified Mastering Biology. Purchase it through Canvas, uh, and you'll have the least amount of problems and issues. And we recommend getting it without the textbook where you can get it for less than $50. Okay? So you should have this. Uh, it is required for the class. And homework is due on Wednesday, uh, 6 17. So, depending on when you're watching this video, it might be today, it might even be yesterday. Um, a note for the mastering assignments, okay? So, we'll scroll down to the bottom of this, right? And so, mastering is in the red. So, here's the mastering. Mastering must be completed by 11.59 on the due date, or credit is reduced by 0.5% per hour. So you get a half a percent deduction per hour of being late, which is about 12% per day. So if it is not in and the wheels are spinning, so if you have a poor internet connection, don't start at 1159, start earlier, right? Because it might take time to, to submit and things like that. Um, you know, make sure it's done by that date, otherwise you'll get a reduction in credit. Okay, so you can see the due dates for each one of these, and normally they're a couple days after the day we recommend. All right, um, might as well stay here. Also, staying and looking at the lab, right? So, here's the lab. This lab, right, remember, is supposed to do on Monday, so we gave you a couple extra days, and that's due on the 18th. We'll see what we mean by that's due, but what is due are any points associated with this lab in the knowledge checks or the lab quizzes. Remember, every laboratory is going to have some sort of knowledge check and or lab quiz points associated with it. Typically, it's around 10. It's not always exactly 10. And you know, I know we have one that's 10 and a half and one that's eight and one that's four because it's a short lab and things like that. So you know, there's, those were points. Those are real class points. If you miss those, it's the same as missing, you know, points on an exam. So if, you know, you miss three points on this first lab, it's the same as missing three points from the exam. They all add in the same total. Okay. So this has to be done by 11.59. Come back to the due, due dates, right? So laboratories must, must be completed before 11.59 p.m. on the due date. You can do it before or you're not receive any credit once this is gone it is gone so don't wait till the last minute to do this because again if it's a typical lab and you lose 10 points that's 10 points less you're gonna have an opportunity to earn this semester and you know to be honest though labs can hurt students by not doing them um, and they're designed that if you you know do the knowledge checks and 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 read the material and go through it you can ask questions about it, right? You can feel free to email uh, Dr. Gelinas or myself and we'll send you an explanation back. But I think they're pretty well, uh, have, have the information that you're going to need in terms of the lab information in the module and in the lab manual. Okay? So make sure you note these due dates uh, for these things as well. Okay. So there is a big difference with the due dates. Mastering will accept it late, but you'll get a fairly severe penalty. Half percent an hour equates to 12% a day, reduction in your score. The labs, we don't accept late labs. So you, we're trying to force you to, to keep up with the material by doing that. And studies in uh, education and learning have shown that students that have fairly numerous uh, low stakes types of quizzes and exams like we have in uh, the mastering section or those quizzes and knowledge checks at the end of each laboratory. Uh, having them frequent and having the students schedule them often seems to really solidify learning better than most other techniques. Again, for the vast majority of the student population. So 
this one's important too, but if you're doing the recommended dates, then the due dates will never become an issue. Uh, in addition, it was impossible uh, uh, to schedule uh, completely, but notice that we tried not to have anything due the day before an exam. And so, yeah, there's a couple of things like for lab test two, we've got a lab due right before, but there's no reason why you couldn't finish earlier. Um, and, you know, again, that, that if you stay with our recommended uh, schedule, then that will leave you time to study for the exams the day before the exam. And so that's set up that way. All right. So let's kind of go back to this and, and kind of look and say, okay, for Monday, the 615, what were you supposed to do? Because I'm doing this on Tuesday, 616. Um, so I look at this and I say, okay, lecture, intro, and overview. So I need to go ahead and look at that. So let's go ahead and find that. So I'm going to go to my uh, Canvas course. I'm going to click on modules, even though I was there. And then I'm going to scroll down to my lecture section. So here's my lecture section. Right. And I'm supposed to do the introduction and overview. If you have not looked at this first one, how to complete lecture modules, this will give you a little bit of information about how to do it, what you need to do, things like that. So you're not going to submit anything for lecture. Right. There's no little quizzes per se. What sort of takes that place is the mastering assignments, which have a number of questions. And the mastering assignments are, are really kind of neat because they'll have questions that uh, are multiple choice and somewhat similar to what you'd see on a, on a lecture exam. Um, or they'll have some diagrams or some pictures and identif identification of things. And so they sort of give you a, a flavor of how uh, uh, you might want to look at things and study things. Uh, for the upcoming exam. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that if you finish those, you would do better on the exams. In addition, right, if you don't finish those, you won't get any credit for it. And it, at some point in time, you know, that's really, really going to hurt your grade in the course. Um, and, you know, one of the, the biggest problems we see sometimes are students who, who do okay in the course, but never complete um, the mastering. And while the mastering, uh, questions aren't worth a full class point because what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever percentage you have in mastering and basically make that your percentage out of 100 points. So if you have a 90% in mastering, you get 90 points for that section in class. If you had 80% in mastering, you get 80 points and, and so on. Um, but uh, uh, it's not just those points that you earn in mastering that help. It's the concepts that you learn that help you in terms of the exam, at least theoretically. So here's the little section if you haven't read it. And again, I'm going to go backwards. And this is under lectures, YouTube for test one, because it's the first thing that we do. Okay. There are a couple ways to look at each one of these individually. Okay. Um, the first way. All right, so we'll, we'll go back to that, how to complete the lecture module. So this is the lecture test one information, right? So I read this and I go through it. And, and then if I want to go to the next section, I can just go to next. So see on the bottom right, next. And when I, and if you want to go backwards, it'll tell you where you're going. So if I hover over it, it'll say the next one is introduction to Bio 102 Summer 2020. So I click next. And what we have here is a video. Now, this video is not YouTube. It's linked to YouTube already. And you can hit play and you can watch it in the canvas. And so you can hear Dr. Zelinas made this one. So. And so given that uh, you can watch this video on canvas itself, you can do that or you may want to go to YouTube. If you want to go to YouTube, just go to the top where you've got the name, right? Click on it, and it'll open up the YouTube page. So you can do that as well. Um, you may have to watch these multiple times. Uh, we suggest taking notes on them and things like that. Uh, I would get out a notebook and take notes if you... It's, it's just like a lecture that you would have in class. So, uh, you know... The nice thing about these is if you miss some point, you can go back and look at it again. But uh, that's what we're looking for um, in terms of this. So when you watch this entire video, right, 
you want to go okay I'm, I'm ready to go to the next one you go to next and it says oh introduction overview number one so that's the next video you click on it and it talks about the information for that and you can go through each one of these and it takes you to the next bit of information okay so this one was refusing to connect we'll check that link out but you can go through all of them and, and do that now you don't have to do them all at the same time right if you are done you can click out of it go do whatever else you want to do or work on another portion of the class and then you come back and say oh we had stopped at evolution number three so now you just come back through the modules click on evolution number four and you'll get the the next video okay. eventually as we go through it all right you will get to the exam okay so obviously this exam right is only available on 6:23 at 10:30 a.m. so you have to be ready to take that but that's kind of how how that works so for today then right on 6:15 we'll go back here and says okay I'm supposed to do the lecture intro and overview so going back to the modules scroll down right you should do this if you haven't done it so this should be completed by um, the end of Monday theoretically the introduction video which we saw was eight minutes should be completed and then the introduction overview one two and three because that's all the overviews right those all should be done on Monday if you want to see how long they are you can click at them preview right theoretically So that one's 20 minutes. So you can go through and kind of look at how long each one. I guess you could do this too. You could hit play and it'll tell you it's 20 minutes. So you can look at all of those and see how long those videos are um, and kind of get an idea. And again, you know, for each one, it's roughly uh, whatever we would have in class. If we're meeting face to face, that's the information that you get. So. Uh, also, for the modules, right, um, the first orientation information, right, talks about the scientific method and the properties of life. So you should watch those. And then going back, right, on Tuesday, you're supposed to look at the evolution lectures. So go back to modules. There's a number of evolution lectures. So you see there's four of them there plus the pocket mouse video. And then come down to this and you see that there's a little uh, evolution information here so a little uh, extra module for that okay and then later on after evolution we're supposed to do chemistry and you see oh there's some chemistry stuff about matter and elements and water and electrons then there's we're supposed to do organic chemistry and there's organic chemistry and then cells and there's cells so each one of these little sections is going to help reinforce concepts that are often uh, students want more information on or, or need a little more information on to help you through okay so that's the lecture portion now also going here we have the lab scientific method experimental design so remember the labs are towards the bottom they should be easy to find because I minimized my lecture once to make it easy and I go to lab lab set up a slightly different but not much uh, it's kind of hard to tell and it's subtle but notice here we have these large uh, titles okay you can tell it's a little larger font this is just a title it doesn't do anything I click on it notice that um, my cursor doesn't change to a hand so this is live this is not so when I come here to how to complete the laboratory modules then here it is now, this is very similar to the lecture one right and it'll talk about how to do it and it's obviously different because labs different and when you read this you should have a good idea exactly what you're supposed to do especially if you watch this video now we had uh, noted that some students who ordered a lab manual from the bookstore the hard copy uh, 
they haven't been able to get it yet. And so we've posted the first couple labs here as a PDF file so that you can stay along with it. To be honest, most of the information is contained within the modules for the first couple because we knew this was going to happen, or at least thought it might. Um, and if you're ordering the electronic version from Kindle, once you go to Amazon, it's automatic. So you should have that now if you're going to do that or, if, you know, stop this and get it now if you haven't, uh, because you're going to need that for the whole semester. Okay. Uh, so if you have your lab manual, you can skip this and go to next. And next takes me to the first laboratory. So I want to go back out and look at it for a sec. So we're back out to laboratory test one material. Right, so this is all the stuff on laboratory test one, and just to kind of be complete, right, it says we're supposed to do scientific method and experimental design lab. So I come over here and I say, Oh, here's my scientific method experimental design lab. Now, notice again, this is the larger font, so it's not active, there's no hand here. But I go and click here, and here's the scientific method laboratory. So I can click on this and this has the information for what to do. Okay. Now note, right, it says the laboratory consists of two laboratories in your lab manual. It gives the title and the page number. So you're going to need to follow along with your lab manual, whether it's electronically or whether it's uh, on it with a notebook or whether it's the hard copy, right? Um, and so we're just going to run through this and it's going to go through the introduction and obviously scientific method here. Talk about hypotheses and defining problems and variables. Treatments and repeatability. There's a couple videos for you to watch that are linked from here to YouTube. And then once you're done here, right, you've completed this lab and it says go ahead and go to the next one. The next one is the knowledge check. Knowledge check, you get to take twice. It says it's five points. Okay, so it asks you about a couple of uh, different questions, right? When you're done with that, and again, this has to be done by June 18th. That's the due date. Once this expires, you can't do it. So if you don't get a chance to do it, you won't have the option, the, op you know, the opportunity to earn these five points possibly, right? You go to the next section with experimental design, talks about isopods and what's called the chi-square test. And you're not actually going to um, collect isopods and do the experiment, although if we're in lab, we would have isopods and do it. But what we do is we have a video. And what you're going to do is you're going to watch the video and basically fill in this table with uh, where the isopods are. It's pretty easy. You just count the number of isopods on each side of this container every 30 seconds. And we sped up the video uh, in between, so you're not watching the whole 10 minutes. It's, you know, four or five times speed, and then it slows down and says, okay, count them, and then it increases again. Then it actually has you do a thought experiment. We would do this experiment in school if we were there, and ask you to Think about another type of experiment you could do with the same type of setup and then identify what everything is. And then it's going to ask you to use the chi-square method uh, to analyze your data. So it goes through on how to do that, gives you an example, and then has you go through the, the different ways to do it. So then it asks you to do this at home. Those, those are usually going to be in red so you can see it. And this is kind of a neat little thing and see if it if it uh, works out. And basically, uh, this is asking, uh, you're going to ask a number of different people. Uh, we asked, we said 18 because it's a good number for various reasons. Um, 30 would probably be better, but that seems like a lot. And ask them just to pick a number between 0 and 9. That's it. Uh, also ask them to pick one of the primary colors, red, yellow, blue. Don't give them any other information and then record it. And then you're going to do some statistical analysis to see if people randomly pick those numbers or randomly pick those colors or if there's some sort of selection process that goes on. And then there's the review questions that you should answer that are going to help you on the knowledge check because the knowledge check down there, next one, so there's a knowledge check for the chi-squared. And when we're done with that, if you look at next, there's the quiz. Now, the quiz also has to be done by the 18th. You can always see that there. Okay. You only get one time to take it, right? 
it's only two points because the other ones were three and five points. Okay? And we only gave you four minutes. The other ones are unlimited time. So you don't have time to necessarily to look this up. And you typically get less time uh, as you go on per question. So if you had a 10 question quiz, it'd probably be somewhere around 10, 10 minutes, uh, maybe even be a little faster. Um, the idea is for you to study before you do this because you're not going to have enough time to look everything up. But you want to finish this theoretically yesterday on the 15th, but certainly you have until the 18th to complete it. Once you do the quiz, then that will be the end of this lab, right? So you're not going to turn in any of the information that from the lab that you collected. You're not going to turn in the isopod data. Right? You should do it, you should analyze it, you should look at it, you should learn it, but you're not going to turn that in. You're going to use that to help complete these uh, quizzes and knowledge checks, but uh, we're not going to collect that, you're not going to submit it ever. Uh, and again, if you do it, you'll be much better off in terms of the preparation for the lab tests and these little quizzes. And again, while each quiz, I don't think any quiz we have is worth more than 10 points for the most part. There might be one worth 12, and there's another assignment that kind of uh, Dr. Jelena showed the other day with uh, homework and genetics. I think that's worth 16 points. But, you know, they add up if you miss four or five points from each one because you're not totally prepared. All right. So if you look at the bottom, it says, oh, the next lab, right, is the metric system, introduction, estimation, and conversion. So if you're ready to start the next lab, then you can go ahead and do that and go to it. And then this gives you the same information in the book. And it tells you, oh, start on page 17 of the book. This is where it is. And you go through all the information here. And that's what we see there. And then you can click to the way to convert within the metric system and all sorts of things like that. So, uh, that's kind of how to do the modules and what they're like. Uh, there's one other thing I want to show you because that makes sense. Uh, also, we have Mastering Biology due, right? Uh, our recommended completion date, again, is um, on Monday the 15th. The due date, remember, was Wednesday the 17th, and we saw that for the scientific method and experimental design, that was due Thursday the 18th, right? But for the mastery, let's kind of look at the mastering assignments then. So we'll go to course, and this time we're not going to use modules. We're going to go to my mastering um, and my lab and mastering. And again, you have to purchase this. We sort of wish there was a better alternative but at this point we don't have a better one uh, it is sort of expensive but you know again we went to that free textbook this this semester to try to offset the higher cost of education uh, so uh, we'll uh, won't have to worry about it too much but make sure that you get your modified mastering as soon as possible if you don't have it you can do it right now all right and just go into your Canvas course, right? Click on My Lab and Mastering. And when you get to this opening page, once you've paid, and again, I recommend that you, you do it through this and do the 4780 or whatever that cost was for it. And uh, you can either just go open or uh, mastering assignments and you can do those. So, uh, that's kind of how to orient yourself to things and where to find things. And uh, basically, you just repeat that process every day, which is different. And you're not going to have something to do every day. Sometimes we skip a lecture. Some days we skip a lab, right? But you're responsible for the same amount of material, whether it's an online summer course or a regular face-to-face -face summer course or, for that matter, a full semester online or a regular face-to-face -face course. So there's the information there, the due dates. Uh, the other thing about the lab is looking, the lab and lecture is looking, and if you want to look at the corresponding reading, right, that's page seven for the lecture, and then the corresponding labs, that's page eight of the syllabus. So as always, uh, Dr. G and I are 
uh, open to questions and uh, you know feel free to, to shoot us an email but hopefully that gets you on track on figuring out what you need to do if you have any questions.